Hey guys, and welcome to Quality Shot. I'm really excited to be joined by all-rounder Benny Howell, who plays for not just Gloucestershire, but in the BPL, and also has recently played in the BBL as well. Uh, how are you doing, mate? Good. I'm very well. Busy with the kids, but yeah, all, all well. Can't complain. <laughs> Obviously, recently you've just come back from Australia as well. Um, how's your experience out there? It was um, it was an interesting one. Yeah, it was um, it was great to be a part of the Big Bash. I was to play for the Renegades for albeit two games, but um, yeah, it was a great experience in in that sense. But it was it was different because of of all the COVID protocols and everyone being in a hub and. Um, so I guess I didn't taste the the big bash experience as as you would normally um, sort of ex, you know experience in in previous years. But no, it, it was you know I'm happy happy I've got away because I've I've been out for so long with injury with, with an injury. So it was great to go out and, and play um, over the winter and play some more cricket. Yeah, okay, that makes that makes a lot of sense. It was obviously um, they had crowds there as well, which would have been nice considering that, you know, we, we haven't been able to have crowds for a bit of time. So um, what was it like in terms of the atmosphere in the stadiums, obviously, albeit the two games that you played? But was it a bit different to the atmosphere here? It, honestly, the games I played, no one was there. I mean, we played in Hobart. I played in the first... Um, ah. Yeah, the first, the first hub, and um, there was restrictions on people coming in, and, and in Hobart, it was all the games played. So they only turned up, you know, whatever capacity they could turn up to the ground half it was for the first bit of the tournament um, to their own Hobart team. So we were playing, I think we played Perth, one I played in, in Sydney Sixers, so we literally had hardly anyone there for that one. So it was a really, that's what I mean about a really strange experience. It wasn't the big bashes as you know it. So, um, But it was good. It was good. How do you find bubble life as a, as a cricketer? Was it quite mentally challenging being in that bubble, like confined, obviously, normally you'd be able to kind of go on about and you know, you'd have your family with you, etc. But was it was it a bit more challenging? It can be, yeah, it definitely can be. I, I guess I, I'm a, I was a little bit used to it because I played quite a few seasons in the BPL, and it feels like bubble life there when you you know you sort of go from the hotel to the game. You don't really go out much because of security reasons, so you sort of get used to bubble life there. Well, I had to, I had to then. So it was a similar sort of thing, but it being in Australia, so. You know, it's, it's something I was used to, but you know, you see, you see beautiful scenery in Australia. You want to get out there and do things, but you, you can't. So yeah, it can it can have its challenges, but you know, I found a way. It was it was just good to be be able to play cricket, and you know, a lot of people are locked down. So um, yeah, I mean, I was grateful for that. Yeah, you mentioned the the BPL, the Bangladesh Premier League, and you're one of the trailblazers, really, to, from the UK. I think you were the first player from the UK to sign up for it um, a few years back. Um, What's your experience has been like there with, um, I think it's with Magpul Rangers, if I'm not mistaken? Um, yeah, Rangpul and Corner. Corner Titans was the other ones. Yeah. <laughs> How's it been? How's it been uh, playing in the Bowling's Premier League? What's the kind of level like and the conditions? Like, how's it different, mm. I guess, to the conditions you'd have here in the UK? It's, um, it was, it's tough to play cricket there because it's just getting, like you said, the conditions are um, completely different to where you play in England, where it's, you know, more seamer friendly, more batter friendly, and and in Australia where it's more you know pace sort of friendly. Uh, in, in there, you know, all spinners are bowling, bowling mercy overs in the power play, and um, so you're getting used to sort of these different types of finger spinners being able to turn the ball like Shakib and, and players like that. So as a as a batter, as a challenger, it's difficult. Um, and the crowds there, everyone's everyone's mad on their cricket. So the cricket cricket side of it feels like. Um, you know, everyone's around the BPL, you know, they're all talking about it. It's, it's marketed everywhere around Bangladesh. So, you know, you feel sort of really in the mix of it with, with um, you know, around the hotel, with all the, all the all the staff there always looking at you and chatting to you and talking about the games you play. So it feels like, you know, whereas in county cricket, you know, only a few people know about it who, who are county cricket fans, but almost everyone there knows about it and, and follows it. So you sort of under the spotlight bit, but I loved it. In that sense, it was... A really incredible experience. Yeah, that, that makes that makes a whole lot of sense. And mm. I, I guess as a bowler and also a batsman being all rounder, what would you say is the difference between playing here in the UK, where obviously some of the you know, some of the strips are different in different stadiums, but overall the conditions here compared to the conditions uh, in Australia, and then comparing that to Bangladesh, what's what are the kind of three different conditions, and, and what were the different challenges? 
in England, I'd say um, it varies a little bit, but it's very bat friendly and it feels like it's more bat friendly in C20 cricket. Um, but the wickets, they're, they're not as bouncy as Australia. So different types of bowlers in England for T20 cricket will be more effective, I feel. Um, good change-ups and stuff like that in, in, um, in England is, is actually quite valuable um, because you can actually get value out of them. But if you don't, if you're not able to, 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 to bowl those well, I feel like it's quite bad friendly in England. Um, in Australia, I think you know, they more rely on the bounce. So spin bowlers can get bounced and quite hard to um, you know, get hold of a bowl in the right length. And obviously fast bowlers, you, you can sort of create, it's just a lot more bouncy in all the wickets, a lot more bouncy. So it, it takes adjustment as a batter and as a bowler with your lengths. Um, and Bangladesh is obviously different to both where it's um, not as bouncy, it's definitely more skiddy and um, it can, and obviously the wickets can have the ability to, to really rag. They really turn just like they would in India. So, yeah, you've got all three types of, you know, different types of conditions there. So it's it's definitely a good challenge and it's good fun. Yeah, it sounds it, it sounds uh, completely different conditions in, in three different places. Um, it's probably really good experience to just like hone your the skills in your craft. I'd imagine. Um, yeah, I just, no, want, I just wanted to get like a, a, I guess a feel of how you got into the game as well. So into cricket. First of all, like as a kid growing up, how did how did you get into the game of cricket? Um, well, I grew up. Luckily, I grew up in a, in, in school in Reading Sports School, um, and I lived lived in the school grounds where my dad worked there in in, in the sports centre. So he was lucky, luckily a part of the of the, the school setup. So I had my backyard was full of you know football, rugby, cricket, and everything, and. And my dad actually ran the, the school first 11. So I was, as a kid, I remember just popping down there and always loving going to watch and, and mucking around in the nets whilst, you know, they would play play the game. And they had little they had tours to Barbados and stuff, which we, we were able to go on. And as a kid, it was just, yeah. So it was pretty much from very early days, really. I loved, I loved all sports, but cricket, obviously, you know, took the front seat, you know. So um, that's how really I got into it and, you know, in retrospect. Yeah, and I think you you then broke into the the Hampshire side first, wasn't it? The Hampshire setup. Yeah. Uh, initially, yeah. so w what was your experience like there, kind of overall? Uh, yeah, it was interesting. Um, so I was grew up because I was from Reading. I played in the minor counties in Berkshire, and then I signed on the Hampshire academy about fifteen, and then from there I had a two or three years in the academy, and then signed on as a pro for Hampshire there. And I actually didn't break into the first team for the first three, three and a half, four years, maybe, um, as being a pro there. And so I was pretty much I played every second 11 game <laughs> for three or four years, which was which was quite frustrating at the time because they had a lot of big names, big players, and 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 it was hard to break in. But you know, once I did, I had a really I had a decent pro when they had the pro 40 then, I had a decent season there, and um, played only one. I think I played only one county championship game and. Um, and yeah, it was it was a different different sort of setup to Gloucestershire. Very different. It was you know big stadium, you know, decent stadium with the the AGS bowl there, and and um, a bit more money you know floating around than Gloucester. So it was, you were well looked after in that sense. But it was probably wasn't the right place for me at the time. Um, I prefer the Gloucester setup where they actually it's a little bit more family oriented. You feel a bit more looked after you know it wasn't as cutthroat um but it was good to experience a bit of both because it's very important that you know thing you can't just get looked after it is the sports business is cutthroat so i've got experience of that and but it was a good move for me to go to gloucester it sounds like maybe gloucester's a bit more pastoral potentially whereas hampshire's obviously that more as you mm. said like bigger stadium kind of bigger setup there as well yeah um at gloucester so it seems kind of at the moment that you've been you've now revolutionised yourself and you're this T20 specialist, but you've also had some really good performances in first class and also list A uh, matches as well. So kind of going forward, are, are you looking to be just a T20 specialist or are you looking to kind of break in and play for Gloucester regularly in all three formats? I want to play, still play all formats. Otherwise I would just um, have signed a one day contract and just played. T20 cricket, but I enjoy four day cricket still. I love it and I love being part of the team environment. It's a real, I haven't lost my love for that side of things. Um, but I don't expect 
in four day cricket, you know, my, my goals and stuff with that is not to go and play for England and stuff because realistically I'm not there unless something extraordinary happens. I score 1500 runs in the next few seasons, um, which you never know. But yeah, I'm more just enjoying playing for Gloucester and competing against a real high standard of cricket. It's a really competitive league. So uh, I basically love the camaraderie of the group. So um, no, I don't see myself as a T20, T20 specialist as of yet, like specifically, but I know that's obviously the, the strongest part of my game. Yeah, and I heard a really interesting story, and you can, uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but on, on a holiday, you went to, uh, or was it a baseball game, and you took yeah. a little bit of an interest in it, and you ended up being a reserve pitcher for a Melbourne-based side, um, a baseball side, if I'm not, not mistaken. Um, do you take any inspiration from that? Because I heard it kind of inspired you a little bit in uh, your bowling and your change-ups, which uh, you seem to have a lot of. Uh, mm. Can you can expand on that a little bit? <laughs> yeah, I have a li- I have slightly uh, obsessive personality when I, when I find something that interests me. So, yeah, I went over there. I watched the Philadelphia Phillies versus Miami Marlins in in Miami, and um, first time I actually watched a baseball game. I fell in love with it. Really, I, I loved the way the pitchers and the catcher sort of communicated through their their hands and working out what pitchers to throw to you know deceive the batter and work out work the batter out really. And I just thought that's that's gold there. So I thought, why not? I'll go and play some baseball, um, experiment with all sorts of uh, pitches. And I thought, well, yeah, bring it into cricket. So um, yeah, a lot of that helped. And I still look at stuff online, watch videos, watch films, and see what they do, see how they hold the ball and the grip, and see if it can apply to cricket. So it's a lot of experimenting. There's a, probably a lot of muck balls being <laughs> experimented by me sometimes. A lot of them don't come off, so I just I, I leave them. But then sometimes uh, I feel like they are very useful for cricket. And, and again, you've got to work out what sort of balls are going to be most effective actually landing the ball on the pitch. Whereas in baseball, you don't, you know, you throw it. It's all about air movement, you know. So, you know, it's, it's good fun. It's, it's actually just one of my passions. So it's, um, it's definitely helped me. Mm. Uh, and I heard that you claim that you've got 50 different variants of a slow ball. Is that correct? That was a bit of an exaggeration. <laughs> out of proportion. Um, uh, I probably uh, ones if I have, say for a game, I'll probably have up to twelve to thirteen variations. Um, probably about three or four main variations, and then there's a few slight adaptations of those three or four variations. Mm, okay, so I'm, I'm assuming you're utilising. Like I've seen you with knuckleballs and cutters and. And all mm. sorts as well, and I'm guessing that's really useful in uh, the T20 game. But have you found that um, as the years have gone by, that it's you end up utilising it more also in the longer formats as well? Not yet. I haven't bowled too much in the last few years in four day. <laughs> it's still a, a lot about hitting uh, top of off stump, to be honest, in four day cricket. Um, there probably is an element to be able to use that at certain wickets whereas in England you rarely get those sort of wickets I mean occasionally on the fourth day you might but I haven't really when batters aren't trying to take you on doing lots of change-ups unless it's a real I guess maybe India type spinners pitch friendly you know it's it's probably not going to be as effective it may be it may well be effective in in terms of restricting but in terms of taking wickets it has to be a real uh, a real buncer to (laughs) <laughs> to, to make it effective when they're just trying to block it. I like it when they're going at me because then it, then it then they really come in into play. Just like baseball where they're trying to hit you out the ground, you're trying mm. to change it up. Oh, that's, that's yeah. A, yeah, that's a really good, good point. Yeah. A hundred percent. Kind of talking then about the uh, T20 cricket in the, in the blast in 2016, 2017, uh, you got 24 wickets and then also 17 wickets respectively. Mm. Were you a little bit disappointed maybe that you haven't had any success getting called up to England, etc. in that period where you were performing really, really well. You're still performing really, really well now as well in that format. But um, were you a little bit, I guess, hopeful that you might get called up at that point? At the time, yeah. I think I was at the time. Um, because I'm, I'm big on you, you pick guys on merit and you pick, you pick people on, on what, they, what they do statistically and, and how well they do in certain areas of the game. I just... I've learned to let it go the last year or two uh, and what will be will be, but um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm big on um, there's certain guys perform well in these areas of the game. I still feel like there's a, there's an element of around cricket in general. They look at 
what they do in terms of does he a left arm spinner, is he a leg spinner, is he a right arm fast, etc. Because I don't think that matters at all. I just think does he bowl well in this part of the game, power play? Does he bowl well to left feet, right? Does he bowl well in the, in the middle and the depth? doesn't matter if he's a spinner or a fast bowler. It's all perception at the end of the day. Can he bowl well on this pitch in this area to get? And that's it. Not, is he a left arm, right arm? Do you know what I mean? That should that 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 can come to effect, but it's almost that's too heavily weighed upon, I feel, because that's actually not the reflection of what's going on in the game. That's just what the guy does. Um, so, and I think there's a lot of bowlers, not, not really, not just myself, but a lot around the world who's missing out or, even certain batters who are performing in certain areas in the game because they're perceptually not seen upon as that type, then they don't get selected as much. I feel like it's changing in in, 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 in a little bit, but it's still behind in terms of, if you're relating to, like, say, baseball, where they're very much on statistics and actually how well does that, that person do. Mm, okay. And do you think, I guess, nowadays we're seeing, as you said, that a slight progress in data analytics? I think we saw England use it in one of their matches recently. So well, I'm assuming with that drive going forward, as you said, it's going to be more about the kind of outcomes and results and matchups rather than, as you said, oh, hold on, he's a left armour. So having that, having that kind of option and mm. that different you know, <clears throat> variation, I guess, and different angle is useful to have. But actually, if you look at his, statistically, the outcomes uh, from when he bowls to right hand or left hander, well, if it's not as successful as someone, for example, you know, a right hand or someone like yourself, then actually uh, look at it and say, well, that's actually not that useful if you look at it um, in terms of the kind of data from it. Is, is that, I guess, where we get... I'm assuming that's where we're going um, with cricket as well. And can you see that happening? Yeah, I do. It's happening more and more now. It's just um, I still feel there's still a slight old-school mindset with it. Um, it is a balance, I guess. You can't just purely go on statistics because it, it doesn't tell... 100% the story it just tells a lot of the story so it's hard it's there's no like 100% right answer this is the way but I do feel like it's definitely it's improving but it's it's still slightly heavily way towards you know is what what does he do left arm right arm etc and I feel like it needs to start progressing a bit quicker than it is mm, okay that makes sense and as an all-rounder um what's your mindset I guess going into a match or in any format, I guess, um, or if it helps, I guess, in different formats, in the, in the three formats, what's your mindset going into it, uh, into a match? Because I've talked to a lot of batsmen and bowlers, and obviously they've given me their mindset. But as an all-rounder, you can obviously contribute in, in both facets, um, and you can win a game in both facets as well. Um, and what I tend to see from all-rounders, and I, I, get, I could be wrong and you can correct me, is, for example, if you don't have a particularly good day with the battle ball, you know, in that, in for example, you don't bowl well on a day, and you come out with a bat and you think, well, actually, I can rectify it by getting runs. And you know, you you kind of got two bites of the cherry almost. If that makes sense. Um, yeah. Or you can perform well in both, and that's fantastic as well. Um, what's your outlook? It depends on it depends on my my mood on the day. <laughs> if I'm in a bit of a negative <laughs> mood, then then um, then I put pressure on myself. But if I'm in in in, in a good frame of mind, then I'm always looking at the best case scenario. So, like you said, it. I haven't done it too well with the ball list. I know I can do do a job with the bat or vice versa. So ideally, I'd like to be in that mindset because it's a better better place to be. Because obviously, being more positive and 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 seeing the the opportunities and things is a lot better. But um, I mean, I just want to perform well, whatever I do. It doesn't matter whether it's bat or ball. I don't really, I don't think about it too much. I just want to take wickets. I don't want to go for any runs and say a T20. And when I bat, I want to score runs and I want to score runs quickly. And, um, I don't really think about if I bat here or I bowl here well. It's just I think I'm more reflect at the end of the game and say, ah, oh, well, at least I haven't bowled well and I bat well and at least I've done that. Or if I haven't batted well and I bowled, do you know what I mean? So I'm more reflective at the end of the game. You just want to do well either way. Mm. And, and, as, and as a round, do you find it quite hard? Because I, I guess with being a specialist, bats on specialist bowler, you just work on one facet, right? And you don't. And that's it. But with you, I guess you're working on your different grips, as you said, as a bowler. But I'm assuming you're working on your batting equally as well. So th is it hard to juggle it and kind of mm. continue to improve in both of this at the same, uh, yeah. same, I guess, same degree? It's a, that's my biggest challenge. And you, you've not just got that. You've got, so now we've got coming out to four-day cricket, I've got to run in and bowl, not covering my hands and run in and try and 
nip the ball around and it's just slightly different to what I do in T20 where I'm just running in by lots of change-ups, like you said. And I've got to do, I've got to bat as well. I've got to bat and work out how to play a ball that's swinging and nipping, whereas T20, I'm trying to whack it. So even then, I'm doing two different things and it's different to T20. And on top of that, you've got to get fit. So I'm still, I would say, recovering. I'm recovered, but I'm still, my hamstring from my injury last year is still not right. So I'm still trying to do balance around how much work I put in into the gym and into the running and, and rehab and stuff, stuff like that in between bowling and batting. So it's like balancing it all out like that. So and then there's fielding as well. So <laughs> sometimes you can do too much of one thing and, 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 and not. But it, that is honestly, as an all-rounder, it's the biggest challenge. Sometimes I'm jealous of, of a batter who just has to catch balls that slip and it's easier. But <laughs> no, obviously I, I, like, I like doing a lot of things. So, But it is, it is a challenge juggling around. Yeah, it, it sounds as from what you're yeah. describing, it sounds very challenging. But also, if you perform well, kind of in both in both facets in the game, then it's probably really rewarding after that. You feel like actually, yeah. I've I've been able to kind of win the match or be a match winner. And I feel like an all rounder is that slot where it brings balance to the team, but it's also one where you know you, at times you you will be the match winner because you can yeah. contribute in both facets. Um, it's really interesting you said about. Now it's not just a case of you have to focus on batting and bowling, but it's batting and bowling in different ways considering the format. Um, from what I can tell, we're starting to see, uh, like for example, in England, you, each opening pair is, is different really at the moment in all three formats. Uh, do you think we're now in cricket starting to move towards a case where you're going to see more players who are specifically, for example, a test player or specifically uh, you know, a one-day player or specifically a T20 player rather than having back in the day I think you'd have okay well actually this player's a good player they can play in all three formats yes you have to the amount of um, especially T20 tournaments being played and the amount of money in the game um, and they want the highest level then to get the highest level that you're going to have to have specialist players there's no doubt about it because it like I said if you're juggling around so many different skills you can't put, you, you, you can't fully really focus on one or two things which means really you're not going to improve as much as if you were to focus fully on those two things. So I think you will find that. I think you are finding that already, but especially down the line, it, it's going to become way more specialist. Um, I don't know, related to baseball, but even, you know, American football and all those sort of things, it, even most sports around, you're very specialised, aren't you? Whereas in cricket, it's a different sport. You're doing a lot of things. Um, you have to do a lot of different skills. Um, so it becomes tough to keep a rural high standard when you're juggling it all around. Oh, that makes sense. And if you had to kind of give advice to um, a kid coming coming up in the system, uh, in a county system, or kind of someone who wants to, uh, you know, or aspires to be a cricketer, what advice would you give to them if they were an all-rounder? All-rounder? I'd say 100% experiment with all, with all, all, all things. See what you're good at, especially with the ball. Um, still play all forms, still enjoy playing all forms. But then from that experimenting, I would I would then find out what I really love to do, what I feel like I love to do and what I'm decent at. Because um, if you ever want to be a cricketer, you want to love what you do. Otherwise, it can be a long, hard slog. So to be able to do that, yeah, you've got to experiment. Yeah. And how much of the game would you say is mental as a percentage? As you were talking about, obviously, the mental strain. Of, on one day, you might be in a slightly more negative frame of mind or a positive frame of mind. And, and someone who someone who doesn't play at anywhere near your standard, but even local club standard, I feel it, I find it mentally challenging. So I can only imagine 80. how it's for you guys. At least eighty percent. Oh really? Wow. Oh yeah. You can. You, there's lots of research gone into you know people actually visualising training and being able to replicate. They, they, they've connected people up to special systems, and they can actually see their muscles working when they've gone into deep visualization of like doing a specific skill or movement and they've actually activated those muscles in their body by doing that so i mean even then if you can't train let's say and you're injured or whatever you can't find if it's raining or whatever it is then actually mentally getting your head right um is so important and and also if you could actually physically train all the time but if you're mentally not in a game especially as a batter one ball you've gone doesn't matter how much you've trained you've got to be there there mentally when the, when it actually counts it's amazing to think, isn't it? Because obviously everyone talks about skill set and, and yeah, it is amazing to have that skill set, but only takes you too far, well, so far even. Uh, only takes you so far because as you said, it, 
know, it's 80 percent some people i've talked to have said even like 90 95 percent if they're a batsman as well and you know they, they really oh. i think there is a drive on it well you see a lot of guys like hear stories of like who was it just professional athletes and they said they grew up watching certain players their heroes and then they used to copy them they used to just watch and do it and they wouldn't go and they would obviously go and train but just from watching and just from like seeing a player and then wanting to play like him you're already mentally getting in a state to be able to do that um just by and it's amazing what kids can achieve by just watching things and like just it almost ingrains in them when they when they do it themselves you know and so it's I mean, you haven't even done a thing physically yet, but it happens. So I think it's very important. Yeah, no, I agree. It, it, <laughs> you can definitely tell, can't you, that it has a massive part to play, especially in cricket, I think, which is a very unforgiving sport at times um, mm. from compared to some other sports. Um, if I had to press you, uh, I've got a couple of questions for you. So who would you say is the most talented player that you've played with so far in your career it doesn't necessarily need to be the person who's gone on to do the most it can just be someone who maybe you've seen and talent wise you thought wow they stand out um oh, i played with so many let's see i'm trying to i'm going to try and name a player that's not like a <laughs> you give me three if that helps <laughs> big guy i'd say one james james vince at hampshire unbelievably talented with the bat just like everything seemed natural to him, the way he hit the ball, the way he just, just from when he was in the academy, it was quite obscene. Um, he was up there for sure. I'd say, Gloucester, there's a, there's two guys that are like, Chris Dent has always been so talented. I thought he's so talented in things, very talented batter. Um, and he's coming to his own a little bit now. And Miles Hammond as well from Gloucester. He's he's a real talent. It's just he has to get his head around. Like you said, mentally, he's got to get that around. Uh, as a big guy, name one big gun, I think. Obviously, everyone knows A.B. de Villiers. I play with him in rank four riders. I mean, Jesus, yeah. Say no more. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, uh, Can you quickly... Um, I mean, Chris then, I, I've seen him working on... Um, he's working tirelessly on Instagram, I can tell, with his power right. thing. And, and he really... I, I can tell he's, um, as you said, coming into his own for sure. Um, very briefly on A.B. de Villiers, um, what was your experience like playing with him then? Because, I mean, we all know how good he is, I think, and what a phenomenal player he is. But what was your personal experience kind of being around him? He was beautiful um, to be around. Just such a lovely, humble guy. Like, it was incredible. I mean, um, he still loved playing like whenever he was in the game. He used to get nervous before going to bat. He, got very nervous and it, it, he still showed that he cared so um it was a great experience to be around him he was happy to share his thoughts on the game and everything so yeah i was i was very lucky to have shared dressing room with him wow that sounds amazing and then i want to go the, the other way which is what are the three toughest players that you've had to play against the ones that you've looked at and thought oh i really don't want to face them or i really don't want to uh, uh -huh. bowl to them Oof. Question. You know what? I bowl into. <laughs> I played with him a few number. I like, played with him a few times as well. But Riley, Riley Rosso, whenever I play against him, I just don't want to bowl at him. It just, it just looks. Just don't know what to do. Um, he's taken me down one game. Luckily, I've got him out in another game. But it's um, yeah, he's a tough opponent, opponent to play against. <laughs> Bowler. I mean, Rashid Khan. I still. Trying to face him is pretty tough. I'm not really sure what to do still. <laughs> just slog. I think next time I'll just try and slog and hope for the best. It's pretty, pretty impressive. Um, four day, I'll give a four-day name. Um, I remember Faith coming up and Faith. I mean, all the all the little nibblers like Tim Murta, Dan Stevens, and even I uh, not nibbler, he's more more than that, but Toby Roman Jones on a on a on a tough wicket is ridiculously tough to face, like knocking in. <laughs> shaping away oh those sort of bowlers can yeah they're tough to face <laughs> it's, it's I'd actually rather face a 90 odd plus mile than our bowler to be honest I'd prefer because I can actually just react and, uh, yeah. and I know it sounds like yeah sure but no I would <laughs> because when guys are nipping it back and you feel like you get out most balls it's, it's not fun <laughs> no 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 I, you know what you, I, I'm, I'm actually thinking I completely agree with you because 
yeah. and even at the, the kind of low, the low, much lower level that I play at, I, even I'm an opening bat and I just prefer pace on the ball so I can react rather than having someone yeah, who's going to bowl diddly doblies, yeah, kind of, you know, nipping away, um, nipping with that <laughs> control and just on a spot and you're just like, you have to generate the pace and you're like, we, then, we have we have Ryan Higgins like that as well. He's he's a bit more than Dibley Dobler, but he, he he nips it around and he he'll be horrible to play. Like yeah. Especially <laughs> when you've got the wicketkeeper standing up as well, and you're like, oh great, you can't even come out your crease as well. So it's, it's, it's carnage. I talked to actually um, Daniel Bell Drummond, and he said that facing Darren Stevens in the nets is uh, is a nightmare as well. So um, I think everyone finds it. Yeah, it's not not easy. <laughs> not at all. Um, Okay, just kind of uh, wrap up a little bit then. So, what are your ambitions then for this year, for the rest of the year, uh, for 2021, I guess, uh, not just for Gloucester, uh, but kind of generally as well for you as a player? What are your kind of ambitions uh, come, say, the end of the year? What would you like to achieve? Mm. Well, first of all, I want to have a full season and not, 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 not get injured. That would be nice. As a team, we've lost the T20. I obviously want to get the final day again and, and, and do one better than we did last year. Uh, personally, if I want to look back, I'm not going to have any goals in terms of wickets, runs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but I, I want to look back and say, yeah, I will be selected in most teams as a bat batter if I was only a batter, and I'd be selected in most teams as only a bowler. So I want to really do well in both, and um, whatever that means. You know, I'm not going to put any numbers on it, but I'm um, always like to do better than the year before. So, mm, yeah, I, I've, I've heard a lot of people say that. Actually, uh, I want to progress, I guess, isn't it? So, do better mm. than the year before. Some people do put numbers on it, some don't. But I think what seems to be consistent is, you know, what I just want to improve, um, and mm. that I guess is the biggest thing. And um, what would you say is something that you would like to have improved on, like just a sp maybe a specific part of your game that you actually would like to kind of look back on and say, oh, oh you know, this is maybe something that I'd like to improve on and actually I've done it. Um, that's something that um, is important to you going forward. Me, oh, being consistent mentally with the bat, especially for four, both T20 and four day, having a, having a clear game plan and, and approach to the way I go about it in, in both formats, especially four day, I've completely... I was nowhere for a few years. <laughs> I'm not going to not going to lie. I was nowhere for four years back in there. So um, I don't think my first class statistics are a true reflection of how well I can play. But because mentally I wasn't there for for a few seasons, it's let me down a bit. So yeah, I'd like to get that back for sure. Mm, that sounds really interesting. Um, you're saying you're batting. Do you think it's a case of do you have certain? I'm assuming you have different plans for each bowler, as in terms of game plans. Yeah. And and then it's more a case of you target specific ones. And it's not just a case of, oh, I can't, or is it also a case of I play each ball and merit as well? Like, is it, or is it a balance? Like, what is it? It's, it's, I don't have the answer. There's a lot, <laughs> there's a lot of things that come into it. Um, it's a lot of stuff. I mean, you've got to work out yourself and your game and what, how well you can play best first and foremost. And then around that, adapt to certain bowlers for sure. But if you watch all the best batters, they have their game. And they bat themselves with that game. They know they're good at it, and they they live and breathe it. I guess with training and, and how they go about it. So that's the most important thing. Can you tell that I'm trying to get tips from you whilst we're on the call? <laughs> it's funny. It's funny. I always say to um, there were that interview. I say, you know, what? I'm like a sponge, so I try and get, um, I try and not just get information about you know you guys as well and, and expanding my quick knowledge but also if I could get some tips for myself as well, for my batty or whatever else it's fantastic why not talk to the best don't overthink it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly exactly um no, thanks very much mate um and just to wrap up actually I've got one quick question for you which is as a cricketer who's playing uh who's played around the world as well what would you say is the best way in your opinion um, if you get, if it can be a couple of points, just one, on how you would like to see cricket grow globally. What, what do you think is the best way, or one of the best ways to do it? Good question. I think, I mean, it's going to grow. It's going to be a T20, isn't it? It's that's the way it's going to go. There's no doubt about it. I don't think Test match is going to. It still go on for a while, but I just don't think it's going to last. It's not going to go further than what it what it is right now. 
I don't see how you're going to get, especially with the world we live in, so busy and everyone's doing things. How are you going to get new people into the game watching Test match cricket? It's going to be people, like people who love your cricket. We're going to keep watching that. So I think T20 is the way it's going to go. And I think the America is the big market. I think that's a big, big, big market. They can get some proper tournaments going on there and uh, not just of your, your... I mean, they had the Caribbean there, didn't they? The Caribbean League. But if they can really get some international cricket there, maybe if there's a World Cup, they set it up. Um, so all teams from Australia, England, and um, you know, South Africa, New Zealand, you know, all of them, Sri Lanka, you know, all, 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 all the all the teams there. Um, then you may start to get some attraction from from you know your Americans Americans who love their own sports <laughs> generally. But if it was there, you may. So I think that might be the way forward. Um, especially it's like Florida, all year round it's hot. So you, and they've they've already done a few things there. So and you've got a lot of Indians there, a lot of a lot of people from West Indies who who sort of live there now and and even like I reckon you could get the South Americans. I reckon there are a lot of them there, even if it's not just your typical Americans. Um, you know, you might start attracting them as well. So I think that's the way, America. America, yeah. <laughs> America, just put it in America and then it will just... Okay. Yeah, there's talks of it potentially being in the Olympics, like a T10 format, which would be interesting as well. Um, well, that could help as well. That could be, that could yeah. be good. It would be interesting. Yeah. And if I had to press you for a prediction for the T20 World Cup this year, who do you go with? Where's it? In India? In India, yeah, this year. India, probably. Yeah. India looked pretty good. Yeah, I think India are probably always the favourites going into a home World Cup, to be fair. Yeah. They look, do look pretty good. Um, yeah, 100%. Cool. Um, is there anything you want to touch on before we wrap up? No, I'm good. All happy. Well, um, thanks very much, mate for being on. I really appreciate it. It's been fantastic talking to you and uh, maybe we can catch up later on in the year as well. Um, But yeah, I really do appreciate it. It's been uh, fantastic talking. No worries. All good. Have a good one and hope the family's all well as well. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, they're all right. Yeah, I will. I'll be busy after this. (laughs) Have a good evening. Thanks, you too, man. Cheers. Bye.